So we're starting some new material in this video. <clears throat> uh, we're going into chapter 3, and before we get to chapter 3, before we get to chapter 3, I wanted to review, well, let me put review in quotes, a technique for solving a system of equations. A system of two equations and two unknowns. So in other words, something of the form ax plus by equals uh, d, no, e, <laughs> cx plus dy equals f. The way we're going to solve this is using uh, Kramer's rule using something called Kramer's Rule. Kramer's Rule. Um, <clears throat> you, if you've taken some economics courses, uh, you've seen this. Uh, if you've taken linear algebra, you've seen this. Uh, this is just a quick way of solving for x and y. And so the way that uh, the, de the way the rule works is we need to take something called the determinant. So uh, in Calc 3, You'll recall the definition of the determinant. Uh, we had bar and then a, a, b, c, d, and this determinant. So this, these bars here represent the determinant. So you could also say the determinant a, b, c, d. So these these bars here don't represent. Um, absolute value, right? They could be, this could be a positive or negative number, uh, but it's defined to be AD minus BC. So you go down across and across. Good. And so this is, uh, do you remember doing the, uh, computing the derivative? It's not derivative. Uh, determinant for different things in Calc 3. In, in fact, you had a 3 by 3 determinant. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Do you remember how to do that one? Uh, a, and then you remove these and you get E, F, H, I. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we don't do the 3 by 3 one, but just to, as a reminder, D, F, G, I plus C times uh, D, E. Where did you see this? Do you remember? Cross product. Okay, so I'm just uh, doing this as a reminder that we have been working with determinants in the past. Um, so now let's get back to our system of equations. Oops, sorry about that. To solve ax plus by equals e and cx plus dy equals f. We compute x to be equal to, and it's just a determinant divided by a determinant, and y is also a determinant divided by a determinant. In the denominator, it's the determinant, sorry about that, I keep hitting the wrong button here, is uh, the determinant of the coefficient matrix, the a, b, c, d, or just the coefficients a, b, c, d. And so you put that in the other denominator as well. Good. Now for x, what you do is you take this column and you re put it in the first position and then leave the other column alone. And for y, you do the opposite. So you put a, c there and then you replace the second column by e, f. And there you go. That's the uh, that's how you solve for x and y using Kramer's rule. And so, just as a quick uh, example, suppose we have x minus two y equals three, two x plus three y equals five. Okay, then to solve this for x and y, uh, we go ahead and create our um, the matrix that's going to be in the denominators. Take the determinant, that's 3 minus, minus 4, which is 7, right? 
And then for the x coordinate, we take 3, 5, and then keep the other column. So it looks like it's going to be 9 minus, minus 10, is that right? So that's 19. And then what's the other column, or what's the other numerator going to be? Uh, that's 1, 2, keep that column the same, and then put the 3, 5 in the other position. So that's going to be 5 minus 3 times 2 is 6. Is that a negative 1? Good. Therefore, x is equal to 19 over 7. y is equal to minus 1 over 7. Done. Nice. Um, we're going to see that Kramer's rule actually uh, will help us in uh, taking a look at other things as well. You might notice that um, this process works as long as the denominator is not equal to zero, right? What happens if the denominator is equal to zero? Well, if the denominator is equal to zero, then your two equations are either the same line or uh, there's no solution at all. So these, they're either parallel lines or the same line. Okay, did everybody catch that? If the denominator here is not equal to zero, that means your two lines are either parallel, so there would be no solution, or the same line, in which you'd case you would have an infinite number of solutions. Good. So that's kind of a fun uh, thing to remember. This doesn't have anything to do with our book, but um, it's very, it's a very useful technique for solving um, systems of equations. All right. So let's go on to the show now, 3.1. What are we going to be studying now? Uh, second order equations. Second order DEs. So we're going to, we're going to be even more specific about the differential equation, but let's just, um, if we just write down the generic second order differential equation, right, that means the second uh, derivative of y is just an expression that involves t, y, and it could involve a y prime as well. And so as you look at this, you might be asking yourself, well, uh, can I draw a picture of this? Can I, is it possible to draw a direction field in the t, y plane? So let's think about that. If I'm sitting at a point t0, y0, uh, am I able to determine the direction of my function or my solution? And I think you'll s agree with me that you will not, right? Because while you have numbers for t and y, you don't have a number for y prime, and y double prime would depend on that. And so we're not going to have a direction field for a second order differential equation. You might notice it could be possible uh, to try to get something from the 3D, but uh, that would be too complicated to really use. Okay, um, we've also seen that uh, we've had diff second order differential equations in calculus. Uh, for example, uh, when we had acceleration is equal to the, you know, like gravity, this would be equivalent to saying that the second derivative of position is gravity, right? And so that is a second order differential equation. So if we integrate it once, we get a constant there, and then if we integrate it twice, so this is the velocity, uh, we would have um, 1 half gt squared, right, plus c1t plus c2. So this would be your position function. And so you'll notice now what happened is that instead of just having one arbitrary constant, like we had in a first order differential equation, we now have two arbitrary constants. And so just as a, as a note here, for the nth order differential equation, we have n initial conditions. Right, so for second order, this typically means uh, we have two initial conditions, 
and those initial conditions are initial position and initial velocity. Okay, so uh, the IVP in this case then would look like y double prime is some expression in T y y prime. Whoops, let me put a parenthesis there. Then you would have like y of t0 equals y0 and y prime of t0 being v0. Good. So this is the generic second order initial value problem. Good, we're actually going to be more specific than that. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at linear second order differential equations. Um, okay, so I better stop here and we'll get into the linear second order differential equations in the next video.